So this is going to be a sort of advanced filtering tutorial, getting rid of uh, edge noise and data at the edge of an object. So what we're looking at here is a, an example, I think, where you would typically see quite a bit of noise. So you've got a scanner that's above a ceiling, and you have lots of pipes, shiny objects, and just things that are generally placed very close to the scanner. So uh, I want to present a couple things here in an old filter that uh, that can be used to filter out some of these edge points. So if you haven't already created one, go ahead and just create a selection inside of a quick view or a planar view, take your pick, and right click inside that selection with your scan loaded. Make sure your scan is loaded and go to view, 3D view. Uh, in that 3D view, can use your set rotation point to pick how you want to view that data and you can very quickly see that we do have quite a bit of noise uh, due to the proximity to the scanner leading up to the ceiling there so we want to eliminate some of that noise uh, the newer filters in scene are really designed to keep data at a long range and not eliminate it uh, but but in a situation like this I think we want to use some of these older filters uh, that are more focused on eliminating edge noise on pipes and things that are very close. So in order to access that filter, uh, let's go back. In order to, we could apply it to the entire scan, but we, what we want to do here is present a workflow that allows you to sort of iteratively go through the filter and see what effect it's going to have on your data before you apply it to the entire scan. Um, so if you go back to your quick view here, and in your selection area, you hit the shift key and then right click and go to scan points, filter, and then you go to old stray. And in this filter, you wanna jump back to your 3D view because you wanna be able to see sort of some live feedback for what this filter is gonna do. So the grid size here is how many pixels it's going to look at and it's really referring more to like this grid uh, uh, so like three three pixels uh, it's going to look in a, pixel, in a grid of three pixels or three points uh, and it's going to look to see if there are points that are within that pixel range that fall outside of this distance threshold and it's also going to look to see what percentage of those points fall outside of the distance threshold it's really not a super straightforward or simple concept, but what you need to know is that in order to make this filter, so let's just run it as a default first. Let's just hit apply here and you'll watch some of this top stray noise go away. And if uh, you're not gonna see it right away, you need to click in the scene and then you'll actually see some of that information disappear. Uh, but you can still see that we've still got maybe what would be considered a little bit of noise here at the top of our pipe. So let's continue to try to refine that. Um, what you can do to make your filter more aggressive is increase the grid size. So uh, increasing the grid size, let's say to four, um, will remove more data. Um, another thing you can do to make the filter more aggressive is to decrease your distance threshold. So making this a lower number will make the filter uh, remove more data and uh, increasing the allocation threshold I believe will also uh, cause the filter to remove more data. So let's just change one thing at a time here. Let's bring that grid size up to four and I'll hit apply and it looks like some more of our data disappeared. I can bring our distance threshold down to let's say 0.3 and, and at this point it's really up to the user how much of that information they want to disappear before they finally say okay that's a that's a good filter. We're happy with the results we're getting, and we're potentially prepared at this point to apply that to the entire scan. So in order to do that on the scan, you would do a shift right click on the scan itself. It needs to be loaded in order for this to be possible, but you can go to operations, filter, old stray, and apply it to the entire scan. Same basic functionality. Uh, I just want to, again, reiterate the importance of going through this process first to understand what filter is going to be successful on 
a majority of your data and then just be prepared to run it and potentially lose some good data, but also eliminate a lot of that edge noise that you're not interested in. I do also just quickly want to show what this does on a, in an outdoor sort of longer range scan data set. So I can load this scan and view it in a 3D view. And you'll just notice that over here on this side of the driveway, you've got some data right now. So this is using the newer filters that are less aggressive up close, but make sure we keep some of this far away data. We've also got some nice data on the house next to us. Um, but if I were to shift, right click, and run our, just the basic uh, default parameters in the old stray filter, what you'll notice is that I end up losing a lot of the data towards this part of the driveway. I'll lose a lot of the data on this house over here. Um, so again, just be prepared that a filter like this is going to be great up close and really eliminate some of those noisy points, but may have the effect of killing some of your longer range data at the same time. So that should just about do it. Uh, hopefully you guys find that useful and you can do a better job of filtering out some of that above ceiling data and other stuff that's uh, really close to pipes or shiny objects.